Hi, I'm Carmen. I'm a fourth year medical student from the University of Toronto, uh, and I'm here on elective with Dr. Bob Lee at Waterloo Sports Medicine. Today I'll be talking to you about concussions, um, and I'll hopefully be coming at you uh, from a unique perspective of sitting in your shoes uh, just a couple short years ago. So I'm a medical student, and so this is not uh, information coming from a healthcare practitioner. So I encourage you that if you are s suffering from a concussion to go seek care from your healthcare provider. So what is a concussion? A concussion is a functional brain injury. And what that means is that your brain isn't working the way that it should be because it's injured. It's very similar to having a bum knee or a sore ankle or a sore shoulder. And the symptoms that you're feeling are your brain telling you that it is injured and it needs a break. And concussions are a pretty diffuse injury. So you may notice that you're having these symptoms kind of across the board because your brain is across the board injured. And some people say, well, I didn't even get hit in the head. So how can I have a concussion? And you don't have to get hit in the head to have a concussion. Uh, if you do get hit in the head, you certainly could be concussed. It can be from a neck injury. Or if you get a blow to the body or a fall that's big enough that it shakes your brain in your head, you can still have a concussion. Um, and then some people say, well, I just, I got my bell rung or I'm seeing stars. I can't really be concussed, right? And again, I say to you, that's your brain telling you that it's injured because it's giving you a symptom. It's saying something's off, something's wrong. So you don't have to lose consciousness or have crazy symptoms to have a concussion. So having a bell ring is having a concussion and this is your brain. It's what makes you you and what helps you do absolutely everything every day of the week so we're going to treat you pretty conservatively, even if this is just a bell ring, because we want your brain to get better. Um, speaking of symptoms, I mentioned kind of feeling off or feeling like your bell is rung. And we tend to talk about symptoms in three categories. We talk about physical symptoms, cognitive symptoms, and behavioral symptoms. And physical symptoms are, are things that you feel and you have to describe to someone in the way that you're feeling because we can't see them. These are things like headaches, neck pain, feeling nauseous or feeling just generally unwell, dizziness, lightheadedness, sensitivity to light or to noise, blurred vision or even ringing in your ears. The cognitive symptoms are things that you'll notice more when you're trying to do a mental task or focus on something and you realize, hey, I'm having trouble focusing. These can be things like having difficulty with memory, concentration, or feeling just mentally fatigued or just off and like you're not all there. And behavioral symptoms are often thought of as sometimes emotional symptoms. So if you're finding that you're very irritable or easily frustrated or you're moody for whatever reason, that could be your concussion. And another big factor is sleep. And some people find that they need to sleep way more. Some people find they don't really need to sleep at all. And some people feel like they need to sleep all the time but are having trouble falling or staying asleep. And all of these are symptoms of concussion. And so I encourage you, this is a short video, but if you're having any of these symptoms and you're struggling with them, go seek help because there's amazing resources out there, some of them online and many of them accessible through your healthcare provider. So you do not need to suffer it alone because I know how frustrating this can be. So you're sitting there going, all right, this is the beginning. How long does it take? When can I go back to my sport? And thankfully, you don't have to suffer through this for too, too long because typically people recover in about two weeks. And there is a standardized protocol where we put people through to gradually increase their capacity and get them back to their sport. And
And I have to say it typically takes two weeks because although we have this standardized protocol, everyone's different and every concussion is different. So even if you've been concussed before, this one might be different and it may take longer or shorter. So I can't guarantee you it's only two weeks, but don't be frustrated because if you follow this protocol, we'll get you back to your function, okay? So the first thing to do, which is the most frustrating, is to take it easy. So for about one to three days, we want you to lay low and not do too, too much. And if you think about it, and you think about all of the things that your brain does, everything, we really need you to take it easy and take a step back to let your brain heal. It's the same thing as resting a bum knee or using an arm a little less because your shoulder hurts. Well, we need you to use your brain a little bit less to let it recover. So some things are obvious, like don't do your homework for these three days. Maybe don't go to class because that's intellectually stimulating. Other things are less obvious, like it takes a lot of information processing to play sport. So we don't want you participating in your sport or in your practice, or even depending on how bad your symptoms are, being on the sideline and watching practice can be too much for some people. So no sport related activity, no school related activity for these days. The other things that might seem less obvious are going to your job, which might not be too stimulating, but it's still a lot and too much to take on for these days. Other things that are very cognitively stimulating are driving and using technology. So really limit your use of your phone, no texting, no swiping, and playing video games or watching TV. Now, if you're with me and you've been following, you're like, well, that's everything I do. That's going to be so boring. How do I survive these three days? And that's frustrating. I get it. So there are some things that you can do, like go on a short walk. And if it's not making your symptoms any worse or making your headache worse, you can try listening to some light, gentle music or try listening to an audiobook or a podcast, as long as it's not making your symptoms worse. The other thing you can do is have a nice chat with a friend, but not get into these big situations where you're going out and, and overstimulating yourself. And I get it. These are a hard few days of doing not very much. So I encourage you to stick with it, not get too frustrated, because if you overdo it now, the average two weeks can take much, much longer because we keep having to step it back because you keep re-hurting your brain. So if you're finding you're frustrated, I do encourage you to go seek out some support for that. And I can give you more information in subsequent videos, but uh, you can see your healthcare provider or there are some campus groups as well. So that's the first stage of concussion recovery and what a concussion really is. And the take home points from this video are that your whole brain is injured and concussion is a functional injury. So all of the function of your brain is impaired right now. And so what we really need you to do so that you can get back to being you faster is to take it easy for these couple of days and then come back and see your healthcare provider in a couple of days to start talking about return to play and return to school. Thank you.